Now that we've drawn this, I'm going to trace the path of blood through this final time. So if you'll check out the drawing for just a minute. You can notice we've got a deoxygenated side and an oxygenated side. Let's come in on the deoxygenated side. We're going to come into the right atrium. We may only come in upstairs in the heart. So we're coming in through a superior and an inferior vena cava. We're going to be in the right atrium. Now we need to go downstairs. We need to get to the right ventricle. We'll go through the tricuspid valve, which is a door. We need to close the door once we get down to the right ventricle so blood does not travel back upstairs. Now that we're downstairs, if you will, on the deoxygenated side, we're in the right ventricle, which is not very big. It doesn't have far to pump meaning it's just gonna to pump to the lungs, which are right next to the heart. So it's not very big, we don't wanna overpower the lungs. The right ventricle's blood, which is deoxygenated, is going to leave and go to the lungs. It's gonna to go to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk. And the pulmonary trunk is going to divide into the right and the left pulmonary artery. So if you'll remember that arteries are carrying deoxygenated blood on this side of the heart. It doesn't matter again what's in an artery. If it's leaving the heart, it's, a, it's an artery. So we've left the right ventricle and we've gone into the pulmonary trunk, which is just a bridge. And now we're gonna split and go to the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. And then those are gonna split and go to the lungs. We have to close a door after we leave the right ventricle, here it is. It is the pulmonary semilunar valve. We need to close that door so that blood doesn't try to come back from the pulmonary trunk and go into the right ventricle. We've got oxygen. We've been to the lungs, we've got oxygen. We need to come back into the heart. We can only come in upstairs. Let's look at the left side. This is the larger side of the heart. It has more to do, meaning that it has to pump further than the lungs, it's gonna to pump to the entire body. So let's come back in through the pulmonary veins. There are four of them, one, two, three, four. The four pulmonary veins, two from each lung, will come into the left atrium with their oxygenated blood, with their oxygenated blood, and now we need to get that oxygenated blood downstairs or down to that big left ventricle. We're gonna go through this door or this valve called the bicuspid valve. And again, bi means two, so there's, there's gonna be two cusps, you'll be able to see them. You could also call it the mitral valve. You may have heard of mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis, these kind of things. But they really, the bicuspid valve is easier because you can look at it and identify it. You can also, again, call it the left uh, atrioventricular valve. We'll just call it bicuspid for now. We need to go down with our oxygen into this big left ventricle. Once we're down here, we need to shut this door behind us. And so we're gonna shut that bicuspid valve and now we're in the left ventricle. We have lots of oxygen. We need to get that oxygen out to the body. So we're gonna go out the aorta. And in order to get to the aorta, we're gonna pass through a door called the aortic semilunar valve, which is just like the pulmonic semilunar valve. The aortic semilunar valve is going to ensure that when you get this oxygen out into the aorta, when it's in the blood, that the heart's vacuum effect from its squeezing doesn't suck the blood back into the left ventricle. The blood will now travel out the aorta and go to the body and the brain. It will go back into the systemic flow and perfuse the body with oxygen, right? And then the whole process will repeat. The deoxygenated co will come back through the superior and inferior and we'll go through it again, right? The connection between these two sides, if you're thinking about these two sides as a duplex, the right side of the duplex has deoxygenated blood, the left side has oxygenated blood. They are only allowed to communicate through the lungs, meaning that is what they must send their messages through. So I can send a message of deoxygenated blood to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk on the right side, and then I can return the message back to the heart through the four pulmonary veins on the left side with the oxygen. So I think the lungs are the interface between these two sides.